When it comes to controlling hazards, not all methods are created equally. I mean, if you think about it, if you're on a flight, would you rather have an airplane that has automated backup landing systems just in case the pilot makes a mistake? Or would you prefer that they skip that step and just provide an upgraded seat belt? The hierarchy of controls sounds like a complicated system, but it's all just a list of ways to control hazards, going from the most effective to the least effective. I'm Rachel Walla with Ally Safety, and today we're going to explore how the hierarchy of controls works using the example of a tiger in a zoo. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The hierarchy of controls works with any hazard, but just for fun, let's use the example of a tiger. Imagine you work at a zoo that has a tiger as one of its main attractions. Unfortunately, the tiger keeps getting out and mauling the employees and also some of the guests. So you decide to put the hierarchy of controls to use to solve that problem. Let's start with elimination. Elimination is by far the most effective way to deal with any hazard. In this case, you could decide that the tiger is just too dangerous and your zookeepers aren't able to handle predatory animals. So you could give the tiger to a reserve in Florida. Bye-bye. Tiger eliminated. Next up, we have substitution. Let's say you don't want to get rid of the tiger because that means you'll have one less attraction for guests. So you think about it and decide that unfortunately, the tiger is just too ferocious for your operation. In this case, you may decide to substitute the tiger for a sloth. Sloths are just as popular these days, and plus, they're basically vegans of the animal kingdom and they only reach a max speed of 0.17 miles per hour, even when threatened. Sounds pretty low risk. Engineering controls isolate people from the hazard. Let's say you decide to keep the tiger. It's still a dangerous animal, so you plan to build a cage separating zookeepers and guests from the claws, teeth, and 35 mile per hour speed of the tiger. Overall, it's pretty effective. Moving down to some of the less effective controls. Let's say you have a tight budget. You don't want to get rid of the tiger and you can't afford a sloth or a cage. In this case, you might decide to change how people work with and interact with the tiger. You train the zookeepers and the public to stay away from the tiger. You put up lots of signs warning about the dangers of tigers. And lastly, you make specific procedures about how the zookeepers are to feed the tiger in the safest possible way. It works pretty well, as long as everyone does exactly what they're supposed to. Lastly, you decide to implement personal protective equipment as the last line of defense, just in case the administrative controls fail. You issue body armor for the zookeepers. Then you figure, since guests don't really feed the tiger and are pretty low risk, you just give them some cut-resistant gloves. What? The sign says stay six feet away at all times. So that's the basics of how the hierarchy of controls works. The controls can be a single control on their own or multiple levels of control providing multiple lines of defense. Next time you're reducing risk, take a moment to notice which type of control you're utilizing. Thank you so much for watching and until the next time, I'll see you guys later.